Hi, my name is Grady Turner and I'm an Applications Engineer with the Cross Company Automation Group. In this video, I'll be explaining how to use the force function for the universal robot. You use the force function when you want to exert a certain force in a certain axis. So let's start up a new program, come over to our Structure tab, and then select Advanced and selected force. So when we come back to our command tab, we have the force function now, the, the options laid out for us. In our feature, we have tool and base, and if there was any user-defined functions, they would be here. For type, we have simple, frame, point, and motion. So let's select simple to begin with. Now here's where we select our force. With the force function, we can have zero force, which means along this axis it would be compliant, or you can select a certain amount of force, positive or negative, depending on which direction you want the force to be exerted. In simple motion, the force will always be exerted in the Z direction of whichever feature you have selected. So for here, we've selected base. That means the Z direction for the base is vertical, up and down. And that means the force will always be exerted along this axis. Let's move the robot here to give you an example. Now this button here, teach test, if you press it and then press the teach button on the back of the robot, the force mode will be activated. So to show you here, now I've pressed this button, now the robot is compliant in the direction that you've selected. So this is a good way to test whether the robot is actually going to do what you want it to do. To make a program under here, you just make regular moves like you normally would, add your waypoints, and then play the program. And the, the robot will be compliant or exert the force along the axis you select. Next, we'll go over to how to use frame motion. So if we select frame, you see now we have X, Y, and Z axis, and the roll around the X, Y, and Z, and that's a torque. And you can select each individual axis and the amount of force you would like in that axis. So again, let's select the Y axis, have zero Newtons, and press the teach test. If I hold the teach button on the back of the robot, now the robot is only compliant in the Z axis. If I press here or here, it won't move, but along the Y axis, it's compliant. Let's select the X and Z axis, select teach test, hold the button, and now it's free to move in the Y or the Z axis. And again, you can program a certain force in here that you want it to exert along those axes. Next, we'll discuss the point option under force control. For this, you generally want to add a feature or use a defined feature of your own point, which I've already done here. So let's select point one. Now, we have the same options as the frame type motion, but now the force will be pointed toward the origin of whatever feature you select, in this case, our point. So if we wanted the robot to be compliant around the Z axis of that point, we'll select Z, teach test. Now as you can see, the robot is rolling around a point in space, which is about here. In point motion, or in force control under point, the robot's axes are dynamic. So that means they'll change based on where the robot is around the point. But the force will always point toward whichever feature you've selected. Next, we'll talk about the motion option under force control. For the motion option, I highly recommend making a user-defined plane about which you want to have the force of the robot move. In this, you have a task frame in which the x-axis will always be the direction of travel for your tool center point. The y-axis of your task frame will always be perpendicular to the x-axis or the robot motion and your xy plane of your feature. In this mode, the robot must be moving to exert a force. So if it's not moving, there'll be zero force exerted in the desired direction. For this reason, it's difficult to show you an example, so I'll leave that as a project for the viewer to do themselves.